Hello and welcome back to the Film Posters YouTube channel. Today, Ana Sofia and I are going to be talking about Earwig and the Witch. And just to give you a bit of context, Earwig and the Witch, synopsis. Growing up in an orphanage in the British countryside, Earwig has no idea that her mother had magical powers. Her life changes dramatically when a strange couple takes her in and she is forced to live with a selfish witch. As the headstrong young girl sets out to uncover the secrets of her new guardians, she discovers a world of spells and potions and a mysterious song that may be the key to finding the family she has always wanted. So a little bit of context of the film. Erwig and the Wish is actually the latest Studio Ghibli film since the release of When Morning Was There. It is actually the second Ghibli film created for television, but the first full CGI Ghibli animated film. Also, this movie is actually based on the children's book by Diana Wayne Jones, which if you didn't know, she's also the author of Howl's Moving Castle. So to start off this review, let's address the elephant in the room, <laughs> which is the animation. So as we both know, Studio Ghibli is known for their specific hand style drawing animation. And for this film, they use CGI. Although I do prefer the hand-drawn animation, we can still see like a little bit of Ghibli charm for how they actually made the scenery, especially how they added like the small details in the background to enrich like world building, like recreating the British town or having like little bits and pieces in the witch room. Although for me, like it was really fun and creative but on the other hand, when it came down to the characters, I liked the design, but their face expressions for me felt a little bit iffy and I just didn't like it. So what are your thoughts on the CGI animation? Yes, um, the animation was a bit jarring at the beginning for me due to the sharp contrast with the original works but I wouldn't have had the story any other way, if that makes sense. It still maintains that classic Ghibli feel with the heart and soul of the studio in essence through gestures, especially through Earwig's gestures and through actions from the characters. I also found that specifically when it came to characters, I do understand where you're coming from. Sometimes the shading and the coloring felt a bit off to me just because I think we're so used to where CGI animation is going right now with, um, for example, Raya and the Last Dragon, which is the most recent uh, film that's about to come out. I think you can definitely tell shading and coloring there. And also Soul by Pixar that recently came out. And um, even, Films like Wolf Walkers, which is hand drawn, but still it reminds us a lot about that kind of Ghibli magic that we used that we used to see a lot. So seeing all those recent films and then going back to Ghibli, but in a different way, felt very weird. That transition felt a little bit difficult to get into, but still, again, I wouldn't have had this film any other way because the way that it was told through this animation made sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, like, it is a movie that when Studio Ghibli, okay, Studio Ghibli hadn't had a film since 2013, and people are really just used to the hand-drawn animation, but when you see, oh, it's been years since, like, a Ghibli film, you're going to give us a CGI animation, people didn't like the change, they don't like the transition that the animation industry is happening, and, mm. like, it is a little bit nostalgic in a sense, and kind of sad, but I feel like if people really need to like, just accept that the industry is changing and sometimes they really wanna like, you know, let's try other stuff. Like there's other methods to tell a story. But at the same time, yes, um, the expression, I, it was just a little bit weird sometimes because I was so used to like hand-drawn animation and their expressions are so different compared to CGI, but I wasn't bothered by it. Like, I do agree with you. It, like, it is fitting for the story of this film. Mm -hmm. Especially there's one specific moment where I think the one I love the most when it came to this kind of animation was the Mandrake. 
I feel it definitely benefited him as a character and his expressions and the way he goes throughout the movie. The animation works very well with him. Yeah, I totally agree. He's such a mysterious character. I really wish that the studio or like the creators could have like a little bit more background story to him or a little more context with him because I feel he was the most playable character out of like the four like the four characters including like the mom mm -hmm. that being said I really enjoyed the surroundings as you mentioned earlier the food specifically as well since you know the studio Ghibli is always it's so well known for its food and it's uh, the way it animates the scenery when it has to do with eating and it, it just it felt really nice to see like the pastries and everything so that aspect I did really enjoy because I was like specifically looking out for that because Studio Ghibli is known for that so they still held up on that end. <laughs> yeah like I said when it came down to like the scenery I really like how Ghibli just goes with minor details like again the British town where you see there's a label called Ghibli Bakery or something I'm like okay I see what you're doing and when they go to the witch room you see all those like pots and potions and it also reminds you of other Ghibli films that had to do with that I was like okay there's still a little bit of Ghibli film like Ghibli charm to it yeah the heart and soul as I mentioned earlier is definitely interwoven into the film which is all you can ask for because as long as a film feels like the studio it's coming from regardless of what it looks like I think they did a really good job at, at least capturing that mm -hmm. yes. I totally agree so oh, speaking of which, we already talked a little bit about the characters. So what are your favorite characters of the film? All right. So I've already mentioned this, but Thomas was my favorite character. <laughs> I just really love that little cat. It reminded me a lot of Kiki's delivery service and that kind of feel. So again, it still has that essence that is, it feels like a Studio Ghibli film, but it still felt new. And it was a character with personality, which I think you're going to talk a bit about how you feel one way at the beginning, but then it's totally different when it comes to Thomas, which I was very happy with because I liked how loyal he was. Mm -hmm. And again, so much personality, which helped carry the movie a lot because at some points I did feel a little lost, especially with pacing and everything. So having that dynamic between Earwig and Thomas held my attention a little bit more. Yeah, like I said, I think my, fa again, my favorite character was Randwick. I felt that he was the more mysterious and playable character. I, I was a little bit sad at the end. I was like, I wish they could have used him more because he mm -hmm. really had like a, like a total change at the end of the film from this mean old grumpy guy to like, you know what? He's kind of a sweetheart. And I wish they could have touched upon that. I also like the character design. I liked how like each character had like a very specific emotion or way that it's very different from others. So each character coming together in a house with different personalities did a really great job intertwining like the conversations and such. Now Ghibli does have a thing because they always like do woman characters like female centered characters and yes Erwick does fit the Ghibli mold with it. So it like it can it works. It works for the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My gosh, Erwig. She was <laughs> like we were talking about this earlier. She was bossy and she was very controlling. And it is a bit charming, but in the end, I found it very interesting how she remains a static character. She doesn't really change. She just gets her way in the end. And it was very interesting to see in contrast to films like Spirited Away, where there is clearly a change from beginning to end. You do see how the character evolves. So I found that very interesting when we went into Earwig. Yeah, because if you think about it, like the secondary characters are the ones that change, the witch and Mandrake and Thomas change, but she's the only static character. She entered like the house, like, I want to be bossy, I want to take charge, and end the film, like, yes, she's already in charge of everyone. So I thought it was, like, interesting how mm -hmm. everybody changed except her. But that was a good point. That's a good point you bring up, that the fact that she, she might not change, but everyone around her does, which is a job well done when it comes to storytelling. 
because the mandrake goes from this grumpy guy to he's still kind of grumpy but he he like he has a soft center then balayaga is she's not as bossy of earwig anymore as she was at the beginning then um custard manages to be a little less scared by visiting them and thomas is more willing to creep out of the shadows and not stay hiding all the time <laughs> well definitely and i wish that they would have showed a little bit more of their mother because the mother like she has such an interesting character so mm-hmm. she only was like five minutes into like the whole film but i was like I want to know more about her. I want to know her backstory. I want to know why she was being persecuted by 12 other witches. I was like, that's interesting. I wish they could have, like, at least, like, do something more with her character. Yeah. I wanted to see more of her just because there's also, we do get a little bit of backstory. So we don't see her in present day, but we do get to know what's happening with her, which for a moment, I thought she was gone. <laughs> I thought she had passed and I'm not going to get into how the film ends. But for the longest time, I was like, is this going to turn very sad? <laughs> but no, it's a very uplifting film that I think it's like, it's a charming story full of fun and laughs that would be perfect for a family viewing. So I do commend it on that point specifically going back to the mother again their backstory was very interesting because she is interwoven with the mandrake and bella yaga and like i love that little love triangle that was hinted there definitely like well for me it felt that of course we gotta like remind ourselves that the movie is based on the children's book and it's Mm -hmm. also a televised film which is for family so i feel that's why it was like it is perfect for everyone in a sense but mm-hmm. at the same time I felt that children are gonna see Erwig and they're gonna be like mm, she's bossy I also want to be bossy you know <laughs> she gets her way she gets, she gets her way in the end <laughs> she does yeah and again going back to like the little love triangle again I wish they could have like we could have seen more of the band, more of their relationship. Why are, like, Mm -hmm. these people are best friends? Why are they together? Apparently, like, they were, like, a small little coven that they had their own rock band. I was like, this is interesting. Like, just seeing, like, three minutes of a backstory of them together, I was like, you know what? I kind of see more of this than the actual story. Absolutely, especially that flashback moment where we get to see everything that happened between them and not everything because we, I still feel like there's more that we're not seeing. It gave me very, um, if people know about this Daisy Jones and the Six vibes, it's going to get adapted. I, it gave me those vibes. If you know, you know. And I wanted more of that, <laughs> especially because again, the Mandrake, you see him so serious and he's this writer, but then he was always also this rock musician. And you're like, sir, you have a past that I really want to know more about. <laughs> yeah, like, she, like again, Mandrake, he, he was a writer and it's kind of funny how Irving was like, oh, I, I want to read your stuff. But she actually was like, this is horrible, you know? Yeah. And, and, he, <laughs> and he gained success telling like, their story I was like you know what just (laughs) you do you honey okay (laughs) but it's kind of funny because Erwin was the one who like controlled him to be this way (laughs) she was like um I love that story you wrote that's basically my idea (laughs) yes now that little girl (laughs) (laughs) what are your thoughts on the song because like like in the film there was a certain song that kept reappearing throughout the whole film Mm -hmm. so we listened to different versions I saw the dubbed version of the film so I heard the Casey Musgraves version of the song and I liked it it's the same one that's in the trailer so it, it if you've seen the trailer and you've heard the song and it was very I liked how it went from one point how they used it in the story because it wasn't just inserted randomly first earwig listens to it and then when the others listen to it it is what evokes all these feelings and the flashbacks so it's definitely a very good narrative tool in the film and i like that it wasn't just a random tidbit that was just thrown in there 
Yeah, definitely. I really like how they use the song to keep reappearing, to keep like, oh, let's go to a little bit of flashback. When Mandrake enters the room and he hears the song, it's like totally like, oh, the character starts to change. And I like how they intertwine it with the story. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he man got his heart broken. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely did. I was like, what is this love triangle? Like, like, oh my God. <laughs> it's wild. I need to know that story. I, I keep saying it. I want to be in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to know, like, so who, who is the who is Erwick's dad? Because, like, think about it. If it's only like three of them, I was like, is Mandrake his father? Like, we never got to see what happens, and I really didn't like it. Now, this is a really good transition to talk about the ending. Like, what are your thoughts about the ending? Like, for me, it, like, so I was watching the film, and I was like, okay, let's see the hour. One hour has passed by. There's only, like, 15 minutes left of the whole film. It's like, what's happening? Like, where, how mm-hmm. is this going to end? And when it ended, it just felt really abrupt really rushed and but at the same time get like they do stick with the source and if you like it is a children's book and the author died before finishing the book so I thought like okay let's it's a pa- like, like let's pass it but at the same time I wish they could have like done something of their own yeah looking past that detail of authorship and adaptation wise uh, the film as such felt more like a longer pilot than a film because when you're watching it, you definitely see a lot of setups in within the narrative that you don't get as many payoffs as you'd like. And the ending is a very clear cliffhanger and you're only left wondering what happens next. So in this moment, I would like to say that we are going to go into spoilers. So if you've made it this far, thank you for listening. Um, If you want to be spoiled, then keep on going. But yes, so you've been warned. Okay. (laughs) So the fact that the mother appears in the end, I was waiting for her the entire film. I wanted to see her. I wanted to see how everything interconnected, especially once we find out this love triangle. I'm going to keep going to that because yo quiero chime, yo quiero bochinche. (laughs) And then the mother finally appears, and that's how it ends. And I'm like, "Es una telenovela. I need to know what happens next." See, I was like, "Ma'am, how is it that you appeared?" They were all finally happy. They moved past because it was a trauma for Bella Yaga and for like Mandrake to like they like she broke her little coven. They broke like her dreams because also the band broke down. I was like ma'am you come back and they were already happy like what's going to happen next and the movie ends that way I was like no man like a lot of people are going to be upset first of all a lot of people are going to be upset because of the CGI guy now they're going to be upset because of the ending like how abruptly (laughs) it ended yes I was so okay I wasn't mad but I was upset because I I was personally waiting for her mother to show up the entire time because there comes the point, they change her name in the orphanage. So I wanted her to have that moment where she realized that she was a witch and everything. And she kind of gets it throughout the way. But I don't think there's that clear moment where it's like, uh, like kind of like Harry Potter, you're, you're a witch, you're a wig. <laughs> we don't have that. And I'm pretty sure that once her mother showed up, we would have seen that moment of realization of who exactly Earwig is as a person. Mm-hmm. And we don't get that. And I wanted that. I, I definitely did not feel that closure that we needed the same way that Mandrake and Bella Yaya didn't get that closure. And to what you mentioned earlier, I hadn't thought of it, but maybe that's it. Maybe um, Irwig's mom was with Mandrake and she had, because when she left, Irwig was just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, ahí pasó algo. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, again, spoiler territory, when they were doing when she was like, you know what, I'm done with this band, I'm done with this little coven, like, there was like a, like a momentary flashback where like the mother and Mandrake, they were a little bit like, you know, romantic together, so like, excuse me? Yes. <laughs> I want to know more what happens next, okay? <laughs> yes, because the thing is that, so 
the mother is very romantic with Mandrake in the flashbacks, but then Mandrake is with Bella Yaga. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, what happened there? Yeah, because it is, it is, okay, I'm gonna say it again. Mandrake is the most interesting character of the whole film because he, you see him and he's, again, mysterious, he's angry all the time, and Bella Jaga is like, please do not go to his room. And how can, like, all of a sudden, he turns into a softy, and he's like, he melts when he sees, like, Erwin's mother in the flashback. So I kind of, like, wanted to know more their dynamic. I mean, he still has the record in his room. He still has the music and everything, so he clearly has not moved on. And there is definitely more to the story there. So I definitely, I'm going to keep saying it. I wish we had gone more. Yeah. in that direction but I understand that they wanted to stay true to the story especially given its background and it's um everything revolving around it so that is it for our review of Erwick and the Witch which is actually directed by Goro Miyazaki that he is the son of Ayao Miyazaki so when is the movie available so the movie will be available with a nationwide release in select movie theaters February 3rd, and it'll have its streaming debut on HBO Max starting February 5th. And also, thank you to G Kids Films for allowing us to be able to review Earwig and the Witch. Well, that's all from the film posers. Until next time, bye. Bye.